welcome to the wonderful code free world of Unity plus Playmaker, the awesome visual scripting tool that we're going to use here at the Strange School to make our video games without having to know anything about programming or writing a line of code. So this is the intro to Playmaker. I'm going to try to do it really fast just so you have some idea of what's going on when you get into the other tutorials where we're making the actual games. The first thing you want to do is you probably go visit the Playmaker site, it's hutonggames.com and you can go ahead and look here at their showcase which shows you games that people have made with Playmaker. But let's just go ahead and jump into this. Let's go. I'm going to launch Unity and I'm going to make a new project. Let's make a new project and just call it Playmaker Playmaker 01. So if you already bought Playmaker and have imported into a previous project, you can click here and find it in here and check it and then say done and it will automatically be in your project when you start. But I'm going to assume maybe you haven't purchased it yet or anything. So let's go ahead and just go into our new project. And here we go. We have our screen. So if you want to go buy Playmaker, we would go up to Window and Asset Store. And if you've never been here, the Unity Asset Store is awesome. So make an account so you can download the tons of free assets and some really, really good pay ones like Playmaker. So I'm going to go look on the front page. Sometimes it's here because it is super popular. And I'm just going to search for Playmaker. And the one you want is this one. It's around $65. So these are Playmaker add-ons, but you want Playmaker itself. And you would purchase it here. And after you do, you can click import, download and import. I've already downloaded it, so I have the import button. So I'm going to go ahead and import it. And so I'm going to try to do a really fast version of Playmaker, just so you have some idea of what's going on. I'm going to move that over and import this with the other tutorials. Like, I don't want to make it go too in-depth because there's a lot to cover. I just want to give you what you need to know to go and start making games and learning. So once it's done, you might see a Playmaker menu up here. No, we don't. So, oh, there we go. So it added itself. Sometimes this won't show up, and then all you need to do is save your scene. So I'm going to go Control-S and make a Scenes folder and call this 01. All right, so let me close this. This probably looks a little different from your interface. Hopefully it looks similar now. And when I launch Playmaker, I've installed Playmaker before, so it still has my preferences. So if it looks different, don't freak out. That's why. So let's go ahead and start working with Playmaker and take a look at it. So we have it up here in this menu, and the only thing you really want to focus on right now is the Playmaker editor this window because this is where the magic happens and if you have two monitors it's nice to have two monitors so you can put this Playmaker window over on your second monitor because you're gonna want to have it open at all times but for now for these tutorials if you only have one it also works just dock it down here or figure out some kind of um, layout where you can get the most room out of this so this is where we do all of our Playmaker business. And Playmaker uses these things called finite state machines. So what are finite state machines, you might say? Let me get out of 2D view. You can think of them as they are your replacement for scripts. So these state machines are like scripts. They're little machines you attach to objects to do things, just like scripts do. So let's make a new cube in our scene. And I'm going to click here and go reset. I know it's cut off, but that's how you zero things out if you didn't know. And press F to zoom in on this cube. So this will be our Playmaker test subject. So right now, it does not have anything to do with Playmaker. If it did, we would see a little icon here, which we're going to add a Playmaker state machine to this cube, and you'll see the icon. But right now, your Playmaker probably looks like this because it has the hints on by default, I think. So this is good stuff to know, but if you want to turn it off, just click here. And yours probably also has this. Let me save this or do something. So draw, Playmaker, Gizmos, and Scene View. Oh, yeah, let's add one 
to this cube first so we can see it. So let's add our very first FSM or finite state machine, a little playmaker machine to this cube. It's telling us right here, right click to add it. So let's right click and add an FSM. We get all these little shortcuts that pop up here. And there's two ways that Playmaker is showing us, or actually three ways that we have a state machine, a Playmaker state machine on this object. We have this icon here letting us know. We have this icon in the viewport letting us know. And on the cube's components, you can see this Playmaker FSM script. So these are all telling us that there's a Playmaker state machine on this object. And I'm going to go change some of the preferences here because I don't like these in the scene view. Kind of clutters up the scene so I'm going to turn that off and there it goes it's gone and then I'm going to turn off these hints so we have more room alright so on our cube we have our first state machine right now it's just named FSM so we can click on the FSM tab and let's rename it my first FSM alright so this is an FSM this thing attached and this state one is a state so let's rename this state my first state. So these states can be named whatever you want. It's not like coding. Uh, you don't have to worry about their capitalization or their syntax. You name these things whatever you want to name for your organizational purposes. And when we click on them, you see it has this little blue box around it. That's letting us know that that state is active or selected. So when we do that, it will show us what actions are in this state. So right now we don't have any actions. And actions are the snippets of code that programmers have made for us to use in Playmaker. That's what allows us to do all the things that programmers can do without having to code. So how do we get those things? Because those are important. Click down here on this Action Browser button and you'll get this thing coming up. And So don't get overwhelmed with all these different categories. These are just categories of pre-made snippets of code that are called actions in Playmaker, but you can think of them like macros or anything else like that because they're little snippets of code that do specific things and they tell us what they do and most of them have these really helpful tool tips that tell us actually what they're used for, which is really helpful. So it's a good thing to kind of go through these and read through them and get some idea of what they do. But for now, let's grab this action uh, tab and put it here so we can look at them. So let's make our very first action and we can go up here and look for a wait. So we want a wait action. We're going to double click it, it's going to add it to this state. The state is selected, make sure the state is selected. So what this wait action does, it just goes through a time that you give it a time and then when that time is up, it fires an event. So what are events? We have this event tab here. So state machines are made up of states and right now we just have one state so let's right click and add another state and let's call this one do stuff okay so now we have two states one has a wait action on it this one has nothing so how do we control when and how we go from state to state well events are part of that so right now we want to use an event we want to fire an event to move from this state to this one so let's create a new event called go do stuff and these event names the syntax doesn't matter you can write whatever you want these are just for your own organizational purposes and so we want to use this go do stuff to get to this do stuff state so in order to do that we use our events in conjunction with transitions so to do that we right click on a state and we go add transition and you see we have this go do stuff event that we just created so we click there and now we have this event so now we can use this to control to move into other states so if we wanted to go here we just click and drag out this little arrow so now when this event fires it will use this transition to go to this state so now what we need to do is have an action fire this event and that's exactly what this wait action wants to do. So we can say wait three seconds and then it's asking us what event do we want to fire. We want to fire go do stuff. So let's try out our very first working FSM. Exciting isn't it? Let's press play on our game and you'll see a green box around the active state. So you see this one's active and then three seconds pass and then 
it fires that event like we thought and now this one's active and if you saw playmaker is so cool that it even updates and this little arrow turns green to show you that whoop you fired this event and you went here so this is the basics of state machines this is really all they do is that you have some actions or code using these pre-made actions in a state and then you say do this stuff and then go over here and then do more stuff and do something else so let's get this state going back to this other one so let's create a new event called back to first state and I'm gonna right click and add a transition because we want to use that event with the transition back to first state drag and drop there so now if we press play you might expect this state to go back to the first state but right now it's just gonna sit here because we don't have any action firing this event to trigger this transition so we can just simply right click copy the selected action go back to the state right click and paste it in here so now the wait state was gonna wait three seconds but now it's looking for the finished event go do stuff which we're not using as a transition so it's giving us an error it's saying this event is not used by this state so what all we have to do is go back into this pop-up and then choose the event that's actually active here that we have a transition for so now what will happen as you should expect three seconds are gonna pass gonna go here it's gonna wait three seconds and go back there so this is a working state machine there is a little bit more to them but th this is the basic functionality if you can understand this then you can make games with playmaker because w as you learn more you learn more about actions what actions to use when and where because there's ones that um, you'll use more than others we've looked at the FSM the states the events now the thing we haven't looked at yet are the variables so if you're familiar with variables if you're not they're just containers for data they're abstract references to data they're containers where you can change what's inside of them on the fly during runtime so here we have our different variable types I know this gets cut off but you can go ahead and click here and look through them all these are all the different variable types you can use in Playmaker so let's make a new uh, int variable and let's just call it stuff happened okay so now we have this int variable that we can now use in Playmaker so how about every time we go into the do stuff we want to add one to our stuff happened variable so we can go up here and look for add int and we have an int add and this adds a value to an integer variable that's exactly what we want so I'm gonna double click there and so now these actions will, will fire from the top down so just keep that in mind if you're designing stuff or like if you wanted to get a piece of data and then you wanted to do something to it make sure the get is above the thing that's gonna do something with it this state doesn't really matter too much because it's gonna sit here for three seconds anyway so if this was underneath this one would fire wait for three seconds but it would go ahead and run this one but it's just something to keep in mind so now it's asking us what variable do we want to add to and that would be our stuff happened and then we just want to add one to our stuff happened and by default this debug is not checked but this is something that's really helpful because if you look here at our int add we have no idea what is in this variable right now but when we click debug it gives us a preview so we can actually see what's going on in the variables and that's super helpful so let's go ahead and click play and then watch what happens so let me pause this and so we can peek inside this stuff happened variable so it's zero right now and when we move into the state now you can see now it's one so we've added one to it it's gonna go over here it's gonna go back in here and then it's gonna add two so we have this little machine and it's just adding one to a variable let's go the other way now and let's set our variable so that its default value is three okay so now it's three when it starts and then instead something you can do with these adds if you want to take away from them you just add a negative number so we can just add minus oops one 
So now you can see with our debug, the variable starts at 3, and when we move into this state, when it turns green, now it's 2. So you can still select different ones, but remember the green box is the one that's currently active. And then 1, and then it's going to fire back over there. I'm going to preview this one, it's, it's 1, now it's 0. So something else I want to show you that you'll use a lot with these state machines, it's a real good thing to understand is what you're doing is you're manipulating these variables through your states and then you're making decisions based on the variables. So let's just say this stuff happened was a player health and we went into the state every time our enemy got hit and it took away one from his health and then you wanted to monitor to see when he was dead so if his health was zero then he would be dead. So we want to do something that checks to see when he's dead, when his health equals zero or his stuff happened equals zero. So let's right click and make a new state called dead like that. Let's make a new event called your dead and we're gonna have it come off of this one so let's right click and add that as a transition you're dead. Okay so right now by default this three seconds passes and it goes back to the first state but we want to add something that's gonna check to see if this variable is zero so the type of action we want to use is a compare and if you look here there's a float compare, game object compare, string compare and here's an int compare so you can do these for all these different variable types and they're really handy so I'm gonna double click and use this int compare so now it's asking us what number or variable do we want to compare and there's no variable pop-up in here so in Playmaker whenever you see these little equals um, symbols you can click them and then use a variable in place of a hard-coded number and you can click back if you want so that's what those are so we want to use our stuff happen because we're pretending this is our health so what this action is asking us alright we're gonna compare our stuff happen to zero right zero that's when we're dead and then it's asking us okay when it's equal to zero what do you want to do and we're gonna say we want to fire this event you're dead because we want to move in the state and then it's saying if it's less than zero what do we do we definitely want to go you're dead and when it's greater than that means they're alive so we're not going to do anything we're going to let this wait state go ahead and process and go back to the first one so what should happen is that this thing's going to loop around and take one away and then when it equals zero it should go into this dead state so let's see that happen because watching this and understanding how this works will oops help you understand and make your own machines so now it's two, now it's one, so now we'd expect the next time it comes in here, it should go here. And there we go, it went to our dead state. So this thing went through, it did our minus one, so then this would equal zero, and this thing was just gonna wait for three seconds, but it went ahead and, and ran this one, and it compared it and went here and went to our your dead there's lots of actions in here for you to explore we're going to use a bunch of them during these tutorials but this is the basics of playmaker this is how playmaker works you're just using these states and actions and it really does help once you start using these to draw them out on paper and figure out the logic of what you want to do once you get familiar with some of these actions and then you can just draw it out on paper, you can write up your events and transitions and all your state names and then just come in here and build it and if it works on paper it should work here. But that was just a real quick basics of these Playmaker Finite State Machines. And then a couple things before we go that I want to add to here, this might blow your mind because I didn't figure this out to me while I was using Playmaker for like three months. But you can have more than one Playmaker State Machine at, on an object. So we can just click here and go add FSM to cube and let's rename this state machine 2 and if we go into this pop-up now we can choose between the state machines on this object. So I mean you could have a hundred state machines on this object doing different things and what we'll learn as we go into the tutorials the state machines can even talk to each other and send data from one to the other so they can talk and share and you can do all kinds of cool stuff so that's how you switch between them and this little button will will go between all of your state machines in your scene so if we go on this camera and add another one then we'll flip through all of them and this is the name of the object it's on 
So if we click that, we can see what FSMs are on what objects. If we click here, we flip between our machines. If you want to work on, let's say we go to our cube and we want to keep this active, we don't want it to go away like this when we click away, then you can click lock. So now we can click around and do different things and this will stay here. If we click select, it'll show us the object that this FSM is on. And for now, that's all you do, that's all you really need to know. Uh, you probably figured out that you can scroll around and move around in here with your with your regular Unity controls. So yeah, we're going to get way more into our Playmaker FSMs. We're going to go into different things like global events, global transitions. We're going to send events between state machines. We're going to use a bunch of these different variable types. So yeah, this was this little intro. So I hope it got you a little comfortable with Playmaker. But just start making machines because that's what it's all about. And if this is making sense to you and you like the style of my teaching, then go check out thestrangeschool.com because I have my first course offering up, Can't Code, Who Cares, Make Games Anyway, where we'll be using Unity and Playmaker to make a complete 3D third-person game. So you'll learn everything you need to make your own games, so you can go grab that right now. And if you want a little more free stuff like this intro to Playmaker, if you scroll down through here, you can get my intro to game dev course for free by clicking up here and this is a non-technical introduction to a, a lot of the important concepts that you'll need to know to make your own games so yeah just go to thestrangeschool.com check my stuff out i hope this introduction to playmaker tutorial was helpful and if you want to go further and go fast and start making your games right now then go to thestrangeschool.com and check it out okay thanks for watching until next time bye